Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to give it another couple of minutes. Um, see if there's any last minute people to uh, to join us. Don't want them to miss the beginning. Right, we're, we're at a couple of minutes past half past now, so so I will uh, kick off for us. So thank you to everyone for taking the time to uh, come and join this webinar this afternoon. Um, welcome, whether you are a parent of one of the schools at the Carfrey School Streets, whether you are a part of the school community, or whether you're a local resident who's either going to be affected by the scheme or is just, just interested in hearing a little bit more about it. I'm very glad to have you with us uh, this evening. To uh, introduce you to the team that we've got here, I think if we'll go pop onto the next slide, we've got uh, who, who we've got. So my name is Rebecca Hawthorne. I'm the Travel Demand Manager at Birmingham City Council, and it's my team who've been putting together and uh, bringing about the Car Free School Streets scheme. Um, and within that team, Mandy Slater and Paul Ruffle are our two um, schools officers dedicated to working with schools to um, get have ch enable children to travel more sustainably. Uh, leaving the car at home when possible, walking, cycling, scooting, using public transport um, to get to school. Um, and Sophie Rafik is um, the graduate in our team. She will be here um, doing the technical side of the, the webinar. Um, and the other thing that Sophie will be looking at is throughout the session, if you've got any questions, there's a, a QA and a um, box that you can type your questions into. And what we'll do, we'll at the end, we'll see what questions have come in and we'll just do a bit of a sort of a panel discussion um, with those questions. But you can put, put those questions in at any point during the, uh, the session. Um, it won't interrupt the flow at all. That's absolutely fine. Now the next slide, please. Do my Chris Whitty bit. So just a, a quick introduction before Mandy and Paul talk a little bit more in a bit more detail about the, uh, the schemes that we're bringing forward. Um, Car Free School Streets, we've been doing the programme for since 2019. Um, and the idea of it is that we close the school to motor, close the road outside the school to motor traffic at the beginning and end of the school day, giving children that safe, healthy environment to, to travel in. Uh, we had six schools um, start the, the pilot programme in 2019. We had another six join in September 2020. Uh, a little bit of a break in 2021. Covid had caused a lot of difficulties recruiting schools and uh, getting the systems in place. But we're really pleased now to be rolling out our third phase of school with five new schools, which is uh, St Dunstan's and Colmore School to, to there in Kings Heath, Brownlead Academy in Shardend, Court Farm Primary in Perry Common and Nansen Primary School in Allen Rock. Um, to let you know, the, the Car Free School Streets restrictions will be starting after the Easter holidays. So that's from the week commencing the 25th of April. Um, the initial pilot programme for these schools runs for 18 months. And towards the end of that period, we'll be coming back and talking to schools, residents, pupils about how that's going and whether we make that permanent. I'm pleased to say that all the schools so far that have joined the scheme have gone on to make them permanent. They've been a great success. So I'm going to hand over now to Mandy and then to Paul to talk you through a little bit of the, the detail about the schemes that are coming forward after Easter. Thank you, Mandy, Paul. Mandy, could you just unmute yourself? Sorry. <laughs> Car Free School Streets is a scheme to transport transform the streets outside your schools where they are closed for up to an hour to motor traffic at the start and the end of the school day. So why do we want to do it? It's about reducing congestion at the school gate, reducing parking pressures outside schools, 
helps to encourage walking and cycling and children are safer and healthier by using sustainable travel on the school journey. Next slide, please. There's a criteria we assess schools against as every school is not, is not a suitable location for the Car Free Streets programme. Please see on the screen the type of information we look at when assessing these requests. The school being on board with these schemes is very important to the success as they work in partnership with the school community in, in the everyday running of the scheme. Next slide, please. As seen on the screen, the council's main role is implementing the scheme and putting all the infrastructure and resources in place to get the scheme underway. We will continue to support the schools with resources and messaging around sustainable travel and signpost them to partners who can help in other ways, for example, the local police with enforcement. We all have to work together and play our part to make the scheme a success. And you can see on the screen there a variety of what type of resource and measures the council will be supporting schools with. Next slide, please. Again on the screen, we talk about the school's role in this. We've just spoken about our role, but that doesn't stop the local community supporting their local school by getting involved in marshalling if they have some free time to do so. Many, will, many of you will have seen the Active Street event that happened a, a few weeks ago, and this showcases how the road could be used to promote sustainable travel and give the children a different take and feel and to show that it's not just all about school parking. The collecting of data will give us a snapshot of how pupils are traveling before and after, and schools will be rewarded for their commitment on this scheme by being awarded a Shift Stars National Stars Award. Looking at potential other places to park, such as park and stride sites to alleviate the displacement of traffic that may occur as the scheme gets underway. Next slide, please. This slide shows all the schools taking part, as Rebecca said, in the current phase of the car free school streets. The road is only closed on weekdays at these times and the rest of the day traffic can move freely. I'm now going to hand you over to Paul Ruffle, who's going to discuss the vehicle permits. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Rebecca. So most of you have applied for a car free vehicle access permit and they are currently at the printers. They've had all the information they need. Uh, they're starting the print run, so hopefully you should receive them within the next couple of weeks. Uh, they will be posted directly to you, to your home address. In the case of schools, they'll be sent to the school address and then you can distribute them as you feel necessary. So as everybody has said, the aim of the car free street scheme is to reduce moving vehicular traffic during the school opening and closing times outside school and to encourage safe and sustainable means of travel and to reduce congestion and improve the air quality. I would ask you please, if you can, to not drive unless it's absolutely necessary during the road closure times. And if you must drive, please do so slowly and carefully. There will be an increased number of cyclists and pedestrians using the roads during the closure times. I should emphasise as well the first bullet point, it gives vehicular access to the specified zone. It is not a parking permit. So it doesn't mean if you bring in a car in, you can just park where you like. We would ask you please to park carefully and considerately for other people. Don't block driveways, don't block pavements, please. During the trial period, as Rebecca has mentioned, the permit will be valid until July 2023. If the school and the community decide to make the scheme permanent, then permanent permits will be issued to you. In order to 
support the scheme, the road will be closed and marshalled at the closure points. And these marshals are there to ensure the safety of all road users. Ideally, there should be two marshals at each point, and they will be using either cones or a small barrier to close the road, and they will be moving them if the permit is displayed clearly and they can see that you should have access or exit from the road. Marshals must wear the high visibility jackets provided by Birmingham City Council for their safety. And some of the current car free school streets use walkie talkie radios between the marshals and the school office. So there is immediate communication between the marshals and the school. We will give supportive training for the marshals on the um, work that we would require them to do and they will not be alone. And please remember the marshals are all unpaid volunteers. So the scheme is delivered under an experimental traffic regulation order called a pedestrian and cycle zone for agreed times of between 30 minutes an hour and an hour at the start and the end of the school working day for 18 months. There'll be signs like you can see on the slide and each school will have a separate school streets number. You can see there SS01. The penalty charge may be issued to any vehicle moving in the zone who is not displaying a valid permit. And the scheme is enforced by the local police team as they are able to issue penalty notices. Drivers who place other road users at risk will be identified and their data, details will be passed to the local policing team. And marshals can also advise Birmingham City Council of any concerns they have. There's a lot of questions that you may have. These are the most common ones. So will there be any physical barriers? Yeah, there'll be either cones or barriers. Will residents be able to access their homes when the streets are closed? You're able to apply free of charge for permits and this will allow you to drive a vehicle in the area where the restriction is in place. It's one permit per vehicle. You can't swap your permits between different vehicles. If you change your vehicle, you can apply to transfer the permit to the new vehicle by contacting the council. There'll be an email address at the end of the presentation. If you've got any visitors coming to your property, please see if they can arrive outside of the times of the closure. If it's not possible to arrange this, then your visitors may be able to apply for a temporary permit. In circumstances where someone requires access to your property, a builder, a decorator, a gardener, again, you can apply for a temporary permit. With the temporary permits, we will need to know when the job's starting, when it's likely to finish. So they usually last for a month at the most. And are any other vehicles permitted to access the zone? Yes, emergency vehicles, bin lorries, post lorries, utility companies. You can see them all there, licensed vehicles, taxis, and blue badge holders are also exempt. Coffrey School Streets works best with supportive partnership working between the council, the school, and the community. It's your roads, it's your scheme. And what works well at one site may not work at another. As Rebecca has said, it's an 18 month trial. We will be asking you for your feedback and it's a joint decision between us all if it becomes permanent or whether it doesn't. I'm going to open it up now for any questions. If you have any questions, please can you state which school you're referring to um, when you start speaking. Thank you. And um, so we have a question. It says, what will the enforcement look like? Who will enforce? That will maybe for Mandy to pick up. Yep, OK, so enforcement will be done by the local police teams. Um, we will contact them on a regular basis about whether or not they can come down. In the first instance, we'll ask them 
um, when the scheme gets underway to have a presence there um, and then we'll have some ad hocly. Um, because it's a moving vehicle offence, it has to be issued by the police. It can't be done by our local BCC parking enforcement team. Um, so wherever we can, we'll try to work with the local police teams um, to try and get them involved in it. Um, at the moment, we've had a mixed bag, but generally they've been fairly supportive. And if we feel that um, people are being put at risk, you know, the safety of the children is obviously put at risk as well as the marshals and the staff. We do report that and the police are usually very good at attending. Um, there is a bit of third party reporting that can be done, but again, it's a moving vehicle, so it's down to the local police teams whether or not they're happy to, to take photos. Um, but they do sometimes, if you give us registrations or send us photos, we pass those on um, and we can ask the, the police team to give out warning letters to regular offenders if that's the case. So again, there's lots of options there of how the police teams can support, but usually first hand in the, in the first month or so we do ask if they can give us a, a, a presence um, and, and we are always looking for ways um, where other police teams can support if need be if it fits into their um, sort of police agenda. I, I, hope that I also visit the schools um, on an irregular basis to see what's going on so I'm not going to say to you I'm going to be going to the school on a Tuesday morning because you'll be expecting me but I will rock up just at any old time throughout the year trial period and I'll have a look what's going on and I'll give feedback to the school and to the police if need be and so can Mandy. Thanks Paul and Mandy. So yeah, we, we would hope that for the most part we don't need to resort to penalty charge notices, that actually the, the marshalling that the school and if any members of the local community are interested in getting involved in marshalling the, the uh, schemes then do talk to your local school because they would very much welcome that support but that most of the issues can be dealt with by the marshals on the day so, you know, they've got something out in the road saying no nope, you can't come down here without with unless you've got a permit and that we can deal with those informally but where we do need to we have got support from the police um, also, on another note, um, obviously we get disbursement of traffic that happens when the school street is closed. So if there are restrictions in place in and around those areas, we could um, ask our BCC um, parking enforcement team to come down and do a bit of enforcement um, if restrictions are in those roads where displacement of traffic is taking place um, to try and alleviate some of the issues that might happen if displacement of traffic happens around um, those roads. So we do have a little bit of um, extra support um, outside of the, the restrictions if the other roads surrounding have, have parking restrictions in place already. Um, I suppose the other thing that we should mention on that as well, sorry, is the fact that when the schools do um, obviously complete their travel plan and part of it, we do have the safer routes to school scheme or the, or the um, school streets where we can put um, some extra engineering measures post the 18 month period um, when we find out where the displacement of traffic is happening. Um, so there's another uh, question from Colmore School and it says, will um, congestion increase in Howard and Tenbury Road? Yes, yeah, so I think this is Mandy's largely covered that actually with the last comments that she made um, in that, you know, we will monitor the situation around. Um, our goal ultimately is for children wherever possible not to be being dropped off by by car but to be walking cycling scooting um, if they're a bit further away traveling by public transport to get to school um, but we do appreciate that there are still going to be some children who are dropped off and as mandy has said there is some potentially disbursement to, to other local streets and we will look to see what we can do there in terms of parking enforcement and if it's a case of it's not illegal parking but it is causing causing a problem because of that traffic that wasn't uh, previously on that road, then we can look as we monitor the situation as to whether there are engineering measures that we can bring in that might make a difference um, and reduce people doing that. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a wait and see because until we actually put the scheme in place, we don't know quite where any displacement will happen. Uh, but we, you know, the, the goal is for people not to be driving to the school at all uh, if possible. 
And we will try and promote park and stride sites if they are available. I mean, obviously, Kings Hay Park is one, perhaps um, the school were speaking to the, the pub next door a little bit. So the, we will be exploring with the schools, potentially um, areas where a little bit further away where people can do and park and stride if need be, as the scheme settles in. Thank you. What else do we have, Sophie? Um, someone has asked if there will be any cameras. OK, I can pick that one up. So the, the um, legislation has recently changed to allow us to use cameras to enforce moving traffic offences. Until recently, we just couldn't. We, we Legally, we weren't allowed to do that. There is now dispensation. We can go and ask the government for permission to do that. We're in the early stages of looking at how that might work for Birmingham um, and to developing uh, potentially a pilot, maybe with one of our um, schools that has already got car free school streets um, to try and bring that in. Um, that will probably be a little while because there's quite a lot we need to, to iron out in terms of the legislation, the responsibilities and a lot of, of dull paperwork probably to get through. But we, we are interested in trying to use schools. I know that London schools where um, they, they have had the powers in London for longer have had successful um, enforcement by camera. So that's that's one for the future. There won't be any immediately at these schools that we're talking about today. Um, We've got, uh, we've got another one there, Sophie. Yeah, it just says, um, please, could you do a summary at some point? Yeah, so the recording of this uh, webinar will be available online. Um, we'll upload that tomorrow um, and send around a link to people who have registered for the, um, the session and we'll put it onto our website for anybody who wants to, to come. Um, but essentially, we've been talking tonight about the, um, the Car Free School Streets programme, whereby we close um, roads outside of schools to motor vehicles at the beginning and end of the school day. Um, we've got the five new schools joining, that's the, the ones that are currently on the screen, joining us um, from uh, immediately after the Easter holidays, so the week commencing the 25th of April. Um, and if you watch back on the recording, you see there's some information about when the closures are, um, resident permits and any other exemptions for where vehicles are allowed to move um, in and travel down the streets that are closed, although we would recommend that if, if possible you avoid travelling at those times because every moving vehicle is potentially a risk for the children attending. Um, and we've talked a little bit about how the scheme will work. It will run um, for 18 months initially during which time we'll monitor, um, get feedback from parents, the school community and uh, local residents and after 18 months basically we um, seek to, to make if the school if the scheme is working we seek to make it permanent and of the 12 schools that have already been part of uh, this programme, all of those have gone on to make it permanent. So we are, you know, we're, we're happy with the way that the, the scheme works. Um, if you are also, if you're a resident waiting for a permit and have applied, um, that should be coming to you in the next couple of weeks. They are with the printers at the moment, but um, I'd, I'd recommend watching the recording. It won't be too long to, uh, to pick up and catch up. Thank you. Have we got um, another one come through there, Sophie? Yeah, so it says um, Howard Road is already hugely affected by the LTN scheme. Wait and see is not appropriate. There is nowhere near enough parking at Kings Heath Park. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, so um, right to note that two, two of the schools are within the um, area of the Kings Heath and Mosley Places for People scheme. Um, if there may be people on the um, webinar who are not familiar, if you're not from Kings Heath, that's um, a scheme that we have put partially in place and have plans to extend where we are trying to um, prevent cut throughs by vehicles or smaller sort of residential roads, trying to keep those vehicles onto the main roads um, to improve the quality for walking and cycling um, on those smaller residential streets. Um, we are aware that, yeah, you're quite right, Howard Road is um, one of the boundary roads in that area, so is one of those which is taking that bit more traffic and there are there's some issues of congestion um, in Kings Heath. We've got quite a programme of um, measures to try and um, alleviate that where possible, but ultimately our, our policy goals are reducing um, the need to travel by car and for making alternatives more attractive. So that's our, our long term means um, of, of dealing with the congestion. But I do appreciate that's not going to take it away tomorrow. Um, so there is a is a need to try and deal with things now. Um, 
King's Heath Park, there may not be enough parking for everybody, but Mandy also mentioned some options around the, um, the pub in the, the local area. Um, and we also, as, as she said, work very closely with the school itself to encourage the um, children to, to walk and cycle where, where possible. And we, we don't want them arriving by car. Um, and we will be out there, I can assure you, in the first couple of weeks, seeing what's happening and seeing whether there's anything we can do. Um, and bringing parking enforcement colleagues and the police um, if we need to do that. So it's all about making it a safe environment for the children walking to school. Yeah, and also as well, um, as part of the Motif Stars um, programme, um, there is a five minute walking bubble map um, that schools can use to promote sort of areas or roads that are a five minute or 10 minute walk away. So again, that gives the opportunity for the school to promote that parking and striding, not necessarily in key spaces, but spreading it around a little bit in the local roads if need be. I think that's all the questions in the chat at the moment. Um, if you do have questions um, that you think of later, um, haven't wanted to ask tonight, then we've got the connected um, email addresses just up there on the screen. So you're welcome to email anything in to those. The other question that we have sometimes been asked, not on this occasion, is um, about sort of future rollout and, and other people from other schools saying, you know, can my school get involved? And um, the answer is, yeah, we're always interested in to hear from schools, particularly from within the school community who have an interest in becoming car free school streets. Uh, Mandy mentioned there's certain criteria that we need to look at as to whether they are suitable locations for that. But we're always happy to work with any schools and um, there's definitely an emphasis on coming forward from that, um, from the council. There was a, a motion to full council back in January, I think it was, that really emphasised the importance of, of the work with schools and the, the journey to school and committed additional um, resources to doing more and more with schools. Uh, so rolling out more of the type of work that we do. So, um, yeah, we've got very much hoping to expand and increase on this this programme and do lots more with schools. Yeah, I think the, the two, the three key points to remember if you are a school interested is obviously it must not be on a bus route, um, obviously not not to be located near a major artillery road um, and a maximum of two point of closure. Those are the normal ones that we look at. Those are the, the, the three key ones. I don't think we've got any more questions coming in there, so I will draw us to a close and um, thank you to my colleagues for um, coming in tonight and uh, de uh, delivering this webinar. And thank you to those of you um, listening at home who've taken the time to, to join us. And uh, so we will send you the link to the recording if you want to share with any friends, relatives, um, other people within the school community, then you're very welcome to do that. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>